Okay, developers, welcome back. In this video, I think it's time for us to revisit Ganache. Ganache is a part of the Truffle suite of tools and they've just released version seven, boasting some serious new features. We are looking at forking Ethereum mainnet 30 times faster, massive one gigabyte transaction traces and integration with Infura's Ethereum archive nodes for free. If you're new here, I'm Calvin and at Eat The Blocks, we help Web2 developers transition into Web3. If you've followed or developed in the Web3 space, you've no doubt heard of Ganache. Ganache is a local development blockchain that simulates the Ethereum network, so you can see how your dApp will work before pushing to production. They were the first to launch and allow Web3 developers to run automated tests on Ethereum, and they've been making our lives easier for a while now. They've also been saving us from the lengthy and complicated process of setting up clients with Geth or Open Ethereum just to get access to the Ethereum virtual machine. With Ganache, all you need to do is install it on the command line or you can just use their cool UI. And once you start Ganache up, we instantly get 10 unlocked accounts pre-funded with ETH so we can start testing dApps immediately. This allows us to fail fast and fail often in a safe environment to make sure that our smart contracts are fully tested before deployment. A lot of Web3 developers already use Ganache to fork and test smart contracts in a local environment, so you can make sure that everything works as expected. However, word on the street was Ganache version 6 was a little bit slow, and there were some memory leaks that were making devs a little bit sad, but it looks like Ganache was taking notes and took some massive action. They've pretty much rewritten Ganache from the ground up to make things faster, stable, and more flexible. They've also included advanced caching, which is 30 times faster, which we'll look at in a second. Now, they've also included an integration with Infura so we can get fast and free access to historical data. And we don't even have to pass in any kind of specific URL to get access to it. Now, in other tools, that's a paid feature and it, and it definitely isn't cheap either. And now that they fixed the memory leaks, it means we can run Ganache indefinitely and not have any kind of random crashes. Another interesting point is they've got their common operations at around three times faster than version six. And they're now boasting the ability to support large complex transactions beyond a gigabyte in size. So how exactly have they added so much speed? Turns out they've got two layers of caching. So first we have the hot cache. Now this happens when a transaction trace is run for a second time without closing down Ganache, and this is the fastest. Then we've got warm cache. Now this is like hot cache, but this happens when the exact same transaction trace is run again, but this time after Ganache has been restarted. Warm cache also saves the forking state, so it dramatically increases startup speed when forking. Now let's look at how we can get this on our machine ASAP. Okay, so let's run npm install ganache global. This will give us access to run ganache anywhere from the command line. So we just simply type ganache and then we can just power up the CLI tool. Nice, so by default, you can see we get 10 unlocked accounts and we get access to their private keys. And we also get 1000 fake ether. The mnemonic phrase is also included so we can get things like MetaMask set up really easily and really quickly. Now we can also customize the account creation during the startup of Ganache by passing in a few options. So for example, we can modify the starting balances of these dummy accounts that we get in the beginning. All we have to do is run the wallet.accounts option and then we just pass in the addresses of the accounts we want to modify. And after that, we pass in the value we want them to start with. But then we can also modify things like the mnemonic phrase, we can do the minor gas price, and we can even modify the block gas limit. And if you're like me and you're just always lost, we can run the command ganache help. And that will give us a complete list of all the options we can pass into ganache, which I'm finding super useful. Ganache uses the zero config mainnet forking feature under the hood. Now this allows us to simulate having the same state as the Ethereum mainnet, but on our local machines. And now with version seven and the Infura integration, we can get access to free historical data on Ethereum. And we don't even need to run any additional commands. We just run a single command 
and we can instantly fork Ethereum's mainnet. So let's play with this one. We can run Ganache fork and that will give us our mainnet fork. Ganache then connects to an existing archive node. So that's either in Furas by default or we can specify a specific node if we pass in a URL, but we'll just use the default for now. We'll have a quick look at making requests to blocks older than 128 blocks from the head which would be the archive data feature. Now Ganache fetches five blocks back from the latest by default to avoid missing blocks due to reordering. So now that we have Ganache in full archive mode, we're gonna open up a new terminal window and run a request that's gonna fetch the balance of an address at block zero. We'll use the ETH get balance RPC method that takes an address as well as the optional block parameter. The number after the address specifies the block number from where we want to get our result. So we were gonna use block zero. Now taking a look at Etherscan, this account received a thousand ETH from the Genesis block at block zero. Now what we get back as a response is this number starting with 0x36. Now this number is a hex representation of 1x10 to the power of 21, which is equal to 1000 ETH. And that's how quick they've made it to query archive nodes. So in the comments below, leave a couple of ideas and let us know how you would use this free Ganache feature. Now, while we're on the topic of forking, it's not just the mainnet they've given us. So we've got the mainnet with zero configuration, but in Ganache, we can also fork any Ethereum test network. So we've got Robston, Covan, Rinkby. You can do that by running the command ganache fork.network and then the test net you want to fork. So let's use Rinkby as an example. And you can see at the bottom here in the fork chain location section, we have Ethereum Rinkby via Infura. They've made it that easy. Ganache exposes two RPC methods for manipulating time on our development blockchain. Now, a typical use case would be a smart contract that requires a specific time to pass before users can take certain actions. So if a set time isn't something you wanna wait for, you can use the EVM increase time method. And this will increase the blockchain current timestamp by the specified amount of time in seconds, but you've got to pass it in as a hexadecimal. Now, as much as working in a terminal makes me feel like a hacker, I'd actually like to use Ganache in my projects. And we can use Ganache in Node several ways. We can use it as a standalone EIP 1193 provider, a JSON RPC provider, a Web3 JS provider, and an Ethers JS provider. That's a lot. Let's look at adding it to Node as an EIP 1193 provider. So inside our project, we can just run npm install Ganache, no global flag this time. And then within our project, we can just require Ganache and use it as a provider. And then for the other implementations, they're actually quite similar with a few tweaks. This one for the JSON RPC and the Web3.js and then Ethers.js. And then last but not least, we can just import it directly into the browser using the script tag. And then we can access Ganache from our project. Now let's look at the updates to pending transactions. In Ethereum, every transaction has a nonce. The nonce is the number of transactions sent from a given address. And anytime you send a transaction, the nonce increases by one. For a transaction to be mined, it has to have a nonce greater than that of the previous transaction by one. In earlier versions of Ganache, if you sent a transaction with a nonce greater than the last by more than one for whatever reason, Ganache would just error out and the transaction would get rejected. But now in version seven, if the nonce of the previous transaction is one, and then you send a transaction with a nonce of three, this transaction will sit in a transaction pool and this will wait until the nonce of two arrives. And then at which point both transactions can get mined and then added to the blockchain state. This is a really nice update to the actual behavior of Ganache. The next feature is impersonating addresses. So Ganache allows you to impersonate any account during development. So let's look at an example of how we can fork the mainnet, impersonate an account, and send tokens to another account. So I'm gonna run Ganache, then fork, and use the wallet and unlocked accounts option. Then I'm gonna pass in the address that I want to impersonate. So I'm quickly gonna run the ETH get balance method and check how much we've got with this address. I'm then gonna run the ETH send transaction method 
and I'm going to send some Ether from our impersonated account to another random address. So now that transaction has been completed, we can go back to our impersonated account, use ETH get balance method and verify that our account has been deducted. I think it's evident that the team behind Truffle Suite and Ganache have obviously been listening to us, their users. The number of improvements and new features speaks absolute volumes. We're going to leave a link in the description below to the new version 7 docs so you can check out the full list of new features and let us know how you're going to be using Ganache to speed up your Web3 workflow. That's all for this video. We'll see you in the future.